Three rings for the elven kings under the sky. Seven for the dwarves in their halls of stone. They were at the very foundation of seven legendary treasure hordes, given by the Dark Lord to a race that would prove too hardy to fall under his sway. Today on Nerd of the Rings, we cover the seven dwarven rings of power. By 1600 of the Second Age, Sauron and the Gwaith i Myrdain have created 16 great rings of power, the seven and the nine. As mentioned in my previous video on the elven rings, Celebrimbor would keep the 16 in a region until his realm falls to Sauron in 1697. After capturing and torturing Celebrimbor, Sauron claims the rings of power for his own use. Now there is some discrepancy on how many of these rings were still around at the time of the fall of Eregion. In some accounts, like in the Silmarillion, it implies that when Sauron destroys Eregion, he claims 16 rings. However, in the appendix of the Lord of the Rings, we find out that the three elven rings were not the only ones Celebrimbor gave away. In this account, we are told that Celebrimbor gives one of these rings to his friend King Durin III of Khazad Dûm. This would mean that the dwarven ring we know the most about was never actually given by Sauron. But we'll get back to that particular ring in a minute. Sometime after the fall of Eregion, Sauron gives the nine rings to men, and the remaining rings to the dwarves. It is believed that the seven dwarf lords who possessed the rings were the seven kings of the seven clans. The Broadbeams, Firebeards, Ironfists, Stiffbeards, Blacklocks, Stonefoots, and Longbeards. It's possible that Sauron intended these rings to have a similar effect as the Nine would have on men, turning them into wraith slaves in servitude to the Dark Lord. However, the rings would not have this effect on the dwarves. It would not even turn their wearers invisible. Instead, these rings would simply amplify the wearer's natural skills. The dwarves use their rings to amass wealth, bringing about the seven great treasure hordes. However, as they amass wealth, the rings also feed their greed and wrath, which would indirectly be beneficial to Sauron. Being one of the more secretive races, we actually don't know where the seven hordes of the dwarves were. However, we can guess that some may have coincided with the areas where the great dwarf fathers awoke in the earliest days of the world. We also know of a couple specific instances of great dwarf hordes that are overtaken by dragons. The earliest is Skatha the Worm, who plunders a great dwarf treasure in the Grey Mountains. This would be the great hazard of the Dwarven Hordes. In fact, we are told that no less than four of the Dwarven Rings of Power are either swallowed or destroyed by dragons. Two others were recovered by Sauron. The most famous and final surviving ring was the very same that was given to Durin III of Khazad Dûm. It would be passed down the line of the Kings of Durin's folk until it comes to Thror, the grandfather of Thorin Oakenshield, who would recolonize the realm of Erebor. This comes after they are driven from the Grey Mountains by the dragons of the north. With his ring and the Arkenstone, Thor leads his people to Erebor and the realm to great prosperity. As seen time after time in the history of the dwarves and their rings of power, the great treasure hoard of Erebor attracts the attention of a dragon. Not just any dragon, but the greatest of all the Third Age, Smaug. After Smaug takes control of the mountain, Thror, with his ring and his people, goes into exile. As they settle in the lands of Dunland, Thror's ring would pass to Thorin's father, Thrain. After coming to settle in the Blue Mountains, Thrain would embark on a journey in an attempt to reclaim Erebor in 2841. Four years later, he would be separated from his company and captured by the servants of Sauron. They take the king to Dol Guldur, where Sauron tortures him and reclaims the Ring of Thror, the final of the seven rings taken from dwarven control. 
though we do know that Sauron's messenger sent to Erebor offered King Dain these three rings and the realm of khazad in exchange for the return of Sauron's ring, supposedly stolen by the thief Bilbo Baggins. After this, the dwarven rings would fall out of the history of Middle-earth and are lost forever in mystery. Finally, after the Dark Lord's downfall, we see great realms of the dwarves continue into the Fourth Age, unburdened by the presence of a ring of power. In Erebor, Dane's son, Thorin Stonehelm, would rule as king under the mountain. Meanwhile, Gimli, son of Glowin, would lead a group of dwarves from their home to found the realm of Aglarond in the glittering caves behind Helm's Deep. As Galadriel predicted, gold would flow through Gimli's hands, yet over him, unlike many kings before, gold would have no dominion. If you're ready for more dwarves, you're in luck because I'll be interviewing the one and only John Rhys Davies here on the channel. Be sure you're subscribed and have that bell clicked so you don't miss it. As always, I wanna say a huge thank you to my Patreon supporters who make this channel possible. Tom DeBombadil19, Jim Limber Davis, Lissa Me The Cinda, Dane Ragnarsson, Sky Carcass, Zetrock, Grand Strategy Nerd, The Dark Haired One, Salim Rahman, Slide Belts, Wyland, and Debbie. If you enjoyed the artwork in this video, check out the artists in the description and purchase prints of their great work for yourself. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you next time on Nerd of the Rings.